In this video, we're given a heavy disc with a mass of 5.75 kilograms and a radius of 22 centimeters. And this disc is spinning about the center with an initial velocity of 225 rotations per minute. So we're going to have to convert that to radians per second. It's one of the first things we'll do. And we're told that the disc slows down uniformly to a stop after 72 seconds. In part A, we're asked to get the average torque exerted by friction in order to slow this thing down. And in part B, we want to get the total work done by friction as this thing slows down. So the first order of business here is to get that initial velocity converted into SI units. So we have 225 rotations per minute. And we're going to multiply by 2 pi radians per rotation. And it cancels those units of rotations. And all this left to do here is convert minutes to seconds. So there's one minute for every 60 seconds. The minutes cancel, and I'll be left with radians per second. So when I do this calculation, I get 23 0.56 radians per second, just keeping a little extra precision. Now in part A, I want to get the average torque exerted by friction on the disk. And the strategy here is we're going to use the rotational equivalent of Newton's second law, tau equals I alpha, torque equals moment of inertia times angular acceleration. And we can certainly compute the moment of inertia just using the standard geometric formula for the moment of inertia of a disk. And we can get the average angular acceleration by looking at the rate of change in the angular speed on average. So let's start with that moment of inertia. The formula for the moment of inertia of a disk is 1 half mr squared. We have everything we need here. The mass is 5.75 kilograms. The radius that needs to be converted to meters, so 0.22 meters all squared. And when I run the numbers on this, I get a moment of inertia of 0.13915. Again, just keeping some extra precision. And the units there are kilogram meters squared. Now the average angular acceleration, that's just the rate of change in the angular speed. And I'm not going to worry about plus or minus signs here. I know this thing is slowing down, and I'm just going to get a magnitude of that angular acceleration. So my original angular velocity was 23.56 radians per second, and it slows all the way to zero. So the magnitude of that change is 23.56, and it happens in 72 seconds of time. And when I run the numbers on this, I get units of radians per second per second or radians per second squared. This comes out to 0 0.327 radians per second squared. And so I go back and plug into my torque formula. The average torque is going to be I times the average angular acceleration. And when we put it in a calculator, we get a total of 0 0.0455. And my units deserve some discussion here. Radians are technically unitless, so it's sort of optional whether or not we show them. So those are gone. And then I have kilogram meter squared per second squared. Well, a kilogram meter per second squared, that's a Newton. And that leaves me with a leftover factor of meters. So I get my familiar units of torque, 0 0.0455 Newton meters. Next, I want to get the total work done by friction. And the easiest way to do this is to just think about the energy concepts and say, what happened to all the original rotational kinetic energy? It's all vanished by the end of the problem, and it's because friction did negative work on this disk and removed that energy. So all I have to do is look at what's the initial kinetic energy. That's 1 half I omega squared. And I've already got this stuff computed, so I is 0.13915. My initial angular velocity was 23.56. That's radians per second, and I've got to square it. And when I run the numbers on this, I get 38.6. And again, if radians are technically unitless, I can just disappear those. And I've got kilogram meters squared per second squared, and this also comes out to Newton meters, but it's the other kind of Newton meters. A Newton meter, if I'm discussing energy, is a joule. So my initial kinetic energy was 38.6 joules. Friction removed all that energy in the final state, and nothing is moving at all. And so I know the work done by friction, and here I do care about the sign. The work done by friction is negative because it's removing energy from the system. 38.6 joules, and we're done. If you find the physics content on Zach's Lab helpful, click on the Zach's Lab logo on the right to browse playlists and subscribe to the channel. I produce over 100 new videos per month, and subscribing is the easiest way to find new content. Thanks for watching.